I'm Temi Harrison and welcome to Mix. Today we are in Hollywood, California, where the options for food, drink and entertainment are endless. In this town, it is not difficult to start your evening off with an authentic Peruvian meal, then dash off for some craft cocktails and then round your whole evening up with some live jazz music. Well, today we do have all three, but they're all under one roof. So let's go mix up some cocktails at Los Balcones and the Parker Room. My name is Jorge Rodriguez, this is Sam, this is Dave, and I opened Los Balcones in Peru about 13 years ago. And about a year ago when we met, we decided to open the Parker Room and bring back the history of the space. Billy Berg's was an old club back in the 1940s that opened. He had several locations, but this specific location was very instrumental in sort of integrating white and black musicians. Sam and I both live in the area, and about a year ago, we would always pass by this place, and so one night we came in, met Jorge, loved his food, decor, everything about Los Balcones, and got the talking over the next month, I would say, or a few weeks, and ended up, like he said, we found out this history of the space that it was, this old jazz club in the 40s, and Jorge was always talking about, I always want to bring back the origin of what the place was. So we all partnered up and we thought, what better way than to make this the jazz lounge part of Los Balcones. It just felt like it was the right thing to do, just really focus on jazz and bringing it back in an amazing way and doing some great stuff here. So I'm here now with Chef Jorge, and I'm thrilled to see what he is bringing to the table. <gasps> so we've got some ceviche. You have to have ceviche when you're talking about Peruvian food, yes. That's true. And also, is this... Uh, Lomo saltado. Saltado. Yes. Ah, I've been waiting for this. And of course, we've got some uh, shrimp. Camarones. Yes. Camarones. So let's move this a little bit closer, because yes. I can't wait to start eating this. What, well, so we're going to start with the ceviche? This is a ceviche. This is a very traditional Peruvian dish. And, uh, Can I just start grabbing? I'm going to eat oh, with my please, fingers. Oh, please, please, do. You have to get involved with your food when oh, you're eating yeah. Peruvian food. So what happens with Peruvian ceviche is that it's, it's very fresh. I mean, you're lucky in Peru to eat a ceviche after 3 o'clock in the I'll afternoon. You keep talking, I'll keep eating. <laughs> because it's only fresh it's fish all, that we use. It's already been eaten. Yeah, it's already been eaten. Yeah. Yes, correct. So you move on to the other stuff. Yes. What else do we have in here? So we obviously got uh, so fried calamari. Yes. Well, that is a little additional thing that I put in the ceviche, only because I like, you know, the acidity of the ceviche, mm -hmm. yeah. and the freshness of the fish, mm. to contrast with the fried calamari. It's oh, just me. Oh, this is beautiful. It's like, it's crisp, but a little bit acidic. Yes. And, oh, this is so flavorful. And in Peru, unlike any other ceviche from other parts of South America, we don't marinate the ceviche for a long period of time. This is made at the time that is requested. So it's, it's I think it, it comes from the Japanese influence in Peruvian cuisine. Okay. It is more like a, like a sashimi. sashimi. There mm -hmm. you go, exactly. I know my, I know my food. <laughs> so, but you have also a little bit of, what is it, garlic in here? Uh, a little bit of garlic, some lime, um, mm -hmm. salt and pepper. Yeah. And this is uh, some Peruvian corn. And it's uh, an oversized corn that comes from Cusco. Even in Peru, ah. in the coastal area, you get corn that this is are... huge. I want you to try it before we talk about it. All right. Oh, it's very meaty. Yes. I like it because it actually tones down the acidity a little bit. It kind of, it kind yes. of neutralizes everything It doesn't even bit. taste like uh, corn. It looks it's no. more like a potato, yeah, very just, starchy. Mm -hmm. See? Yes. That's why I said meaty. Yeah, <laughs> there it's you meaty. go. Chef Jorge, thank you so much. You're very welcome. I'm definitely going to eat more of your delicious food that you have on your menu. And it's not going to end here because I think we're also going to be doing some delicious cocktails. For sure. I'm going to give you a little secret. When you go and talk to the bartender, mm -hmm. tell him to give you a Don Carlos. A Don Carlos? All right, I'll see what happens. I'll see what happens. I'll see what okay. happens. Okay, salud. Salud. Cheers. I'm here with Santino and we are going to make something delicious. But I have to tell you before we do this, I just had the most amazing food from Chef Jorge, and I had ceviche. 
What would you suggest that we could pair with the ceviche to make it extra special? The ceviche has a lot of citrus in it, so yeah. I think a good pair for it would be a pisco sour. I like it, but I did hear from Jorge, he told me a little secret, that you're not supposed to do it the usual way for me. That's right. Because <laughs> he knows I like my pisco sours. And apparently, uh, I need to tell you the keywords Don Carlos. That is right. Does that make sense to you? It makes all sense, all the sense to me. What is the difference between what you would have made to what the Don Carlos is? So, here, pisco sours are made with two ounces of pisco, but traditionally in Peru, they're made with three ounces. And so that's kind of like an off the menu secret cocktail that we have here is the Don Carlos. So all right. instead more booze. Instead of having your pisco sour here, you have it here. So the Peruvians love to drink. Completely. I've, I've heard, yes. All right. <laughs> My kind of people. Okay, so what do we need? All right, so lime juice. All right. How one much ounce of that? of that. One ounce. One ounce of simple syrup. All right. Sweet and sour, like it already. One ounce, one ounce, and then just, just dump three that. ounces <laughs> and then of pisco. Three ounces of the pisco. Woohoo! So we're gonna do two. Where are these bottles and from? They look more. really cool. They're beautiful bottles. Yeah. This is La Caravelo. This is a Quebranta Pisco, which is a non-aromatic, and it's good for sours because the flavors of it mix very well with the citrus if it doesn't have too much of an aroma. Mm -hmm. Um, last ingredient to give it a really good froth. Yeah. We're gonna do a little bit of egg white, just a, oh. just a dash, about that much. Is this gonna be a dry shake first? It's a dry shake first, correct. We're gonna do that to build the froth mm -hmm. and just make it nice and creamy. Mm -hmm. Shake that up. It's kind of like you're making a meringue, just whip yeah, it up. Yeah, a little bit, right? <laughs> a, little, a little frothy, always good, texture-wise. Palette. And then... Is this one of your favorites? This is my favorite, yeah. Do you drink my it Don Carlos favorite. style, though? I drink it Don Carlos style every time. We should, we should make it the Santino version with four ounces <laughs> and get real crazy. Could it just be all piece stuff? Yeah. Forget about the lime and the simple syrup. Nobody needs that. All and right, like, so. A shot right here. Then we're just going to strain this. Double strain. Yeah. So it just comes sure. out nice and creamy. That looks like a cup of snow. <laughs> do a little tap. And if you want to Ooh. do this, that would be great. You can do five to seven drops of it, just in whatever variation you feel like. Two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. I'm going to take this straw. And then just kind of try and... Listen, it's my design. <laughs> no, joking. Sorry. I'm joking. What would, you, what, what would you normally do? I just try and run the straw through it where it's touching two of the dots at the same time. Oh, that's much better than I do. <laughs> it looks beautiful. All right, let's dig in to Enjoy. the traditional Peruvian Don Carlos Pisco Sour. Enjoy. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Is it horrible? It's disgusting. <laughs> so I must drink more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fresh, it's citrusy, it's actually sweet. And I like it that I can actually smell the bitters on top yeah, as well. Yeah, the that bitters yeah. is a really nice touch. It's really, really good. And it's super frothy, so it's nice on the tongue. Nice. Well, I'm well glad done. you like it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. I do think we should do a Santino version with the four <laughs> Just use the biggest cup I have. Yeah, just, just <laughs> grab the bottle and run. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. These drinks aren't meant to take 20 minutes and sip on. These are like fun, great drinks. You're watching jazz, you're having a good drink. It's all made with premium ingredients. And just something that we've experienced on the East Coast that we didn't see here in LA was everything was too serious. And when you go out, you want to really enjoy yourself and really feel that connection with the staff. And we wanted to make it fun. You know, we wanted to make it that place where people went, had a great time, didn't feel like they spent an arm and a leg but really went home thinking, God, that was awesome. I want to come back there. I want to tell my friends. Or better yet, I don't want to tell anyone <laughs> because we don't want anyone to find out about it. Hi, I'm Cammie. And I'm Tessa. And we're bartenders at The, the Parker, Parker Room. Room. 
So we're going to show you today how to make the night in Tunisia, one of our signature drinks. Tessa's gonna make it and I'm gonna explain what's happening. Dream team. Okay, so grab the tin, Tess. Yes, ma'am. So we use a little rum called Bayou. It's a great spiced rum that started off in New Orleans. So put two ounces of that in okay. the tin. And if it was us drinking it, we would do double, but we'll be safe today. <laughs> Okay, put it down. All right, so next we do chicha morada. And you might be thinking, what's chicha morada? <laughs> so we're gonna explain it to you. Grab the thing. Okay. So chicha morada is a Peruvian punch made with blue corn, and we stew it down and we put it in a clay pot. And we put it in pineapples, apples, cloves, cinnamon, and some secret ingredients that we can't tell you because then you'll go home and make it, and then we'll go out of business. So. Put that in there. I did. Okay, great. Next is pineapple juice. Cool, shake it up. Shake up the pineapple juice. Since it's fresh squeezed. It's fresh squeezed, so sometimes the stuff gets down here, you know what I'm talking about. So you gotta really shake it up. Really shake it up. Okay, so put an ounce of that. This is really important. Tessa really likes to be risky, pouring it all over here. She's a risky bartender. Okay, now an ounce of that, or an well, ounce of that. I did it. Lime juice, fresh squeezed lime juice. Oh, you want to shake it up? Yeah, I like when you shake it up. Here you go. Do you want to do this part? Oh, sure. I awesome. love that. Cool. All right. And last, certainly not least, certainly not least, we put agave just to make it a little bit more sweet. About 0.5 ounces of that. Put it in there. So now is our favorite part the shaking it. Should we shake both it. shake it? Yeah, sure. Cool. All right. So put some ice in there. Cammy actually taught me how to, how to shake. You're Travis. actually, before it was a sad, sad travesty watching her shake like this. She was, and it looked bad too, like you don't want to be shaking like this. So I taught her how to really do it right. Yes! Okay. I think I'm shaking enough, but I'll give you. <laughs> okay, now you get the glass ready while I keep shaking. Cool. <laughs> how could we ever do this alone? I don't know. There you go. All right, so now grab the strainer, which is la 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 la. We don't know where it is, but that's okay, because we're gonna do this, this, this. There you go, see, pour improvising. It in. Improvise. Beautiful. Pour it up. Woo! <laughs> now you garnish with the pineapple stock. And you know, the customers really love it when we lean over and we pluck the pineapple like this. They're like, whoa, I didn't know. I thought that was just there for decoration, no. It is a garnish. You can even put two sometimes. They like to be friends. Two, two for us. And wait, let's drink it together like Lady and the Tramp. <gasps> okay. Ready? Yes, Lady and the Tramp. Wow, really good, Tessa. Great job. We're Thank a great you. team. <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> Ow, I have a ring. It hurts. <laughs> we named it the Parker Room after the famous jazz musician Charlie Parker. So this was his first West Coast show when he moved here from Kansas City. And he brought that style called bebop. If you know anything about music or jazz, uh, bebop is a, is a familiar style now, but back then it wasn't, uh, especially to the West Coast. It was a very New York style of uh, music. So him and Dizzy Gillespie used to play here all the time and brought that sound to the West Coast. So this was the place where he originally let the West Coast see what kind of style of music that was. So it's really cool to bring that back. All right, everyone, I'm here now with Tessa, and you are gonna show me a really cool drink. Really cool drink. How do you feel about tequila? I like tequila. Do you like it? Because people do. usually love it or they hate it. I love it, maybe a little too much, but um, today we're gonna have the Groovin High. Now, Groovin High. Groovin High, yes. All of our drinks are basically named after either a famous jazz musician or one of their songs. Like so, it. what do we need? All right, so to get started. Tons of tequila. Obviously, tons of tequila, but also we're gonna muddle. I love how, muddle. How much more of a shake up? Okay, so maybe I'll muddle and you can shake. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure okay. it out. Cool. So, we're gonna just grab a few cucumbers okay. and then a few pieces of mint. You're gonna smack the mint? Yes, like smack. Yeah, you know, you know what's up. Okay. So, my mint. everyone always makes fun of me for muddling super hard, but I always just pretend and it's an ex-boyfriend. Exactly. Yes. So we're gonna do that. Mean, mean. When you don't clearly like Beep. it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I like it that you're actually like, you're slamming it. Oh, you're not grinding I sl it. I slam it. Gotta get all the flavor. Slam that cucumber mint. Yes, okay. Let's 
done. We'll do, we'll do that part out, yeah. Okay, so we're going to take, obviously, um, that was a bad ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to use Code Eagle. Have you heard of this? Uh, yes. It's so good. So we're gonna use two ounces today. I like personally to use a lot more, yeah, it's but a strong you know. one. Yeah. <laughs> So right. after the tequila comes one ounce of fresh and organic, fresh squeezed lime juice. Nice. So that comes next. Okay, one so ounce. Organic and healthy. Yes. Room. And then it comes organic agave. Mm. Sweeten it up a little bit. So next we're going to put some ice. Is this drink gluten free? It is gluten free. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we are going to shake, which is your favorite part. Yes, it is. Okay. Shake away. The anticipation builds when you do this. Gotta get ready. Okay. Yeah. Next, we're gonna put some ice. Ooh, I can't wait. It's so good. Then we just pour it into this lovely that glass. It smells a little bit like a mojito. It does, right? With the mint. Yeah. yeah. So pour away. And I like it that you don't double strain it, so you actually can eat all the little bits of right? bread. Right? Yeah, it's like we salad. We want mint in our teeth. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> all right, and then we just garnish with a lovely cucumber. Beautiful. And then pop a straw in there. And here is the Groovin' High. Groovin' High. Here it goes. Cheers, everybody. Verdict then, good. Super refreshing. Yay. Cucumbery, minty, <laughs> lovely. Well done, yummy, yummy, yummy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cheers. I want you to try now another very famous Peruvian dish. Now, I've been looking forward to this yes. a lot. Because... Everybody knows what a lomo saltado is. It's like, uh, like a staple of Peruvian cuisine. But let me tell you one secret, though. What? I grew up in Peru, and I don't remember having gone to a restaurant to eat this, because this is stuff that you prepare at home. Just oh. like you get from school and go to the fridge and yeah. there's some meat and potatoes and onions and tomatoes and it's like staple so stuff tame. that you have at home when this you make a family. This is stuff that you make all the time. If you don't have any meat, you do it with chicken. If you don't have chicken, you do it with shrimp. So this is a very Asian influenced dish. It's a stir fry, uh -huh. and we use filet mignon for this dish, and it's a, a sauté, it's like a stir fry. Mm -hmm. Very quick sear. Onions, you also do the same thing. We season it with soy sauce and vinegar. And then I make a little special sauce. And we do serve potatoes and tomatoes with this dish. Mm. Let me see. Let me see if okay. I make it right. It's good. <laughs> mm. It's so juicy and tender. See? I can't give you the recipe of that. Oh, you can give it to me when the camera's on rolling. <laughs> okay. Very good. Do not open a restaurant, a Peruvian restaurant right next to Olvo. I won't. Okay. It'll be two blocks now. <laughs> okay. Okie dokie, it is my turn. <laughs> what are we making? We are making the Rosarita. Rosarita? It's a margarita made with floral hints to it, and rose water is one of them. Rose water. So that's where we changed it to Rosarita instead of Rosarita. <laughs> like a margarita <laughs> mixed with roses. So, all right, what we're going to do here, yes. my friend, is three quarters of an ounce of lime. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Good. Three quarters of an ounce of ruby red grapefruit. Ruby red grapefruit. Beautiful. Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. God, I love these bottles, they're so pretty. They really are. And then you're gonna do one ounce of hibiscus syrup. That's made here oh. in-house with fresh hibiscus flowers. Just I just splattered some of myself. <laughs> it's great on a hot day. And it's great on a hot day. It does, it cools you down, who knew? <laughs> Fun fact. I didn't. Anyway. So, the alcohol that we're using for this is the Código Rosa. This is a tequila that is aged in Cabernet barrels. Código is oh. great. Yeah, this is one of my favorite tequilas, and the Rosa is definitely my, my all-time favorite is of all of them. Is that what gives it the little pink tone? That's what gives it the pink color, yeah, exactly. Nice. So, 
it gives it just a really nice color. I'm like, oh, this is fun, but it didn't, oh. <laughs> didn't, didn't come off. There you go. All yeah, right, it so smells kind of kind of like oaky a little bit, a little yeah, bit kind oak, of but whiny. Oaky, whiny, tequila-ish. Yeah, those that... were even words. <laughs> How much of this goes? So two ounces of that. All right. Got it. Your eyes here. You're gonna give this just a subtle shake. There you go. <laughs> what's, what's subtle like this? That's subtle. That's perfect. <laughs> just to kind of mix it up a little bit. And then you strain it into this. There you go. Nice. Good moves. Been practicing. <laughs> so you strain it into. I'm gonna hold this, this, glass. this guy. Oh, this looks so pretty. It's a beautiful color. It's very. Actually, I can smell it from here. It smells delicious too. And okay. the last thing you're gonna do, you're gonna do two vialfuls of rose water. Two vialfuls. Yes. Which holy cathedral of. <laughs> Machu Picchu is this from? It's from the Holy Grail directly. The Holy, the Holy Grail <laughs> from Indiana Jones himself. And then you're just gonna top that with, that's enough rose water there. Well, you said two vials, they were halves. Oh, okay, yeah. See? Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. All right, just finish that one, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> I misled you there, that was, that was my fault. I know my measurements. <laughs> All right, so then you're just gonna top this with crushed ice. All right, if you Excuse can do that. Excuse me for a second. If you like. And then the garnish for it, it's very simple. Just grab two of those, just put one in, and then just layer one right on top of it. Okay, I'll put this one on this side. And then just lean one up against it. Like this? Inside the ice. What? Vertical. Oh, like this? Vertically against it. This way. We'll this way? Three. Yes, this way. Oh. Like that. Would be good <laughs> if I knew what the difference between horizontal and vertical was. <laughs> and that is the Rosarita. Enjoy. All right. Let's see what this is all about. Actually, very interesting. Right? I expected it to taste completely different than what I thought. This is like a really naughty lemonade. <laughs> That's what I would call Thank it. You. you know what? Here we go. Perfect. Put straw in there. Thank you, my friend. Try that. Did I do good? Oh, you did spectacular. Yeah. If if I need you to cover for me on Saturday, can you do that? I'm busy. <sighs> All right, I tried. But I will come back. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, everyone. All right, cheers. <laughs> Us three together feel very strongly about a perfect night out in Hollywood would be you come to Los Balcones, you get the Lomo Saltado, you get dinner over there, you get a Pisco Sour. As soon as you're done, you can walk right over to the parker room. Live jazz, great drinks, fun staff. There's not a spot in Hollywood or in LA that's like that, where you can get these two things under one roof and you don't have to go to so many places. You can literally get it here, a full night out. Dinner, drinks, and an, a full experience in a Hollywood place that has so much history. I'm here now with Cammy. So it's Tammy and Cammy. Yes. We're going to be making drinks. Yes, and I'm going to teach you how to make the yard bird, like which it. is actually Charlie Parker's nickname. He went by Charlie the Yardbird Parker, so it's super special. Ah. All right, so we're going to get our rocks glass mm -hmm. and fill it up with ice. Get it all ready. So first, we're going to get a blackberry, a couple blueberries, and a couple of raspberries. Yes, we're getting all our antioxidants in there too. Yes, it's very healthy. Very, very healthy. So we like to muddle. You don't have to muddle as hard because berries are super easy. No squish right stress you need to muddle out? No, I don't, I don't hold grudges as much as Tessa, so you know, you can like. Oh, see. <laughs> bygones be bygones. Exactly. All right, so for this drink, we're going to use Bullet Bourbon, which is a classic Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. Um, most bourbons mix really well with most dark berries. So since we have blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries, it goes well. well. Yes. So we take two ounces. Well, it's gonna be pretty strong then. I'll yeah. Say. One ounce of lime juice. And it's fresh squeeze as always. Okay. And then one ounce of agave. And right. it is organic agave because in LA we keep it healthy. Of course. Yes, of course. So Gotta LA. mention that. So LA. So LA. And the last ingredient we put is just four dashes of bitters. One, two, three, four. Pop. Now we're gonna add some ice. Yes. Got our mixing pan. Now we mix it up. Yep. We mix it up. When I shake it, shake it, shake it. When I first started to bartend, I was like, 
What's the best shake, you know? Kind of like, like a Polaroid picture. Right? Shake it like a Polaroid picture. So then, open it up. Then you pour it in. It's a nice pink Ooh, flavor, just as yummy. you were expecting. Yeah. So, people taste this and they don't really actually know that it's bourbon right away because no, it tastes so great. That definitely and would look like a tequila drink or a vodka there. drink. So then we put a blackberry, a raspberry, and a blueberry to mm. garnish. Put it on top. We have one more ingredient. Oh. But I have to go grab it over here. You do one that. Sec. One sec. One sec. I will, uh, in the meantime, in the meantime, hang out here. So we like to really top it off with some ginger beer. Oh, nice. Yeah, so just a little top. So now you can try it out. Okie dokie. Yardbird, right? Yardbird. The, or the Yardbird is what I like the to say. Yardbird. Yardbird. You sound almost like me. I, I know. I'm the trying. Yardbird. I want to be you, <laughs> Tammy. I want to be you, Cammy. Oh. <sighs> so nice. Cheers. Bar friendship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That is really good. Yes. That totally took me by surprise right now. Yeah, good. Yeah, because um, the mixed viewers know that I'm not the hugest bourbon fan. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. I know. This is awesome. I, this is actually the cocktail I recommend to everyone when they first come this in. This is so refreshing and fruity. Yeah. But it has that little bourbon taste, which is nice. It's not yeah. overpowering. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Thank you. Yes. I'm glad you like it. Okay, in this other dish, even though it's made with shrimp, what mm -hmm. I wanted to feature in this dish is the condiments that we use to season it with. Uh, there's a very interesting herb that comes from Peru. It is called wakatai. 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 And it's a black mint. It flavors a lot of the ancient Peruvian food. I'm using that one herb to season this dish. Uh. Oh, yeah. It actually has a very smoky taste to it as well. We do. We grill it, oh, okay. uh, and then we smoke it by adding some liquids okay. of the marinade on top of it as they're cooking. This is delicious. And you know what? When you said mint, mm -hmm. I really thought it was going to be very minty. Yes. If you put it on shrimp, it'll taste one way. So you could or use it on, like, lamb and stuff? Oh, and lamb is amazing. Yeah. Australians. <laughs> we know our mint and our lambs. This is phenomenal. I'm mm. glad you like it. Jorge, well, hey, thank you so much. You're very this welcome. It's delicious. And it's not going to stop here for me because I'm going to come back at some point privately yes. where you're going to tell me the secret sauce. We're going to do some lamb and also. With, uh, we should do that too. Yes. And I'm going to try other stuff that is on the, your delicious menu very as good. well. Thank Salud. You so much. Thanks Salud. for visiting. Thank you. Sure. Cheers. Okay, everybody, that is once again a wrap from me. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I know I did. Until next time, I'm Tammy Harrison. Cheerio. All right, everyone. Boop. Boom. Yep. I think you do have an aggression. You need some aggression. You need to work off. <laughs> now try it with that. We're gonna do this. Okay. It's just because it's slippery. You know how it is. It's the only reason. Okay. <laughs> Not because we slammed it maybe too, too hard. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <sighs> Something. Thank you, kind sir. No, no. Just pretend. To, okay. No, should we pretend right, like we got it? Pretend like we've got it up. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, how easy was that? Of course. Okay. All right, grab that. Okay. We're both going to need one of these after this. <laughs> All right.